If you're trying to manifest your big desire without addressing the core beliefs that are holding you back, then this video is a must-watch for you. I've noticed that many people who are part of the conscious manifesting community are focused on acquiring something or someone they desire. The strong desire has led them to discover the law of assumption and the teachings of Neville Goddard. However, there's a crucial mistake that many of these people make. They believe that they can both attain and keep their desire with the same self-concept that led to its loss. This is not the case. So if you want to avoid weeks, months, or even years of frustration, here is something that you must understand before you start manifesting your big desire. So watch this video till the end, and if you are new to our channel, subscribe to it and press the bell icon for more interesting, informative, and helpful videos on manifestation. So let's jump right into it. You must change from within first. Neville Goddard says, A man's mental conversations attract his life. As long as there is no change in his inner dialogue, the personal history of the man remains the same. Whether you are lacking the desired relationship, the person you want, or the money you seek, it all stems from the current state you are in. You cannot have or experience anything that lies outside of the state in which you reside. As I always say, you may believe that you have free will, but it is completely dependent on your state. Trying to take action based on a state you are not in is impossible. Where does this state come from? Your self-concept and core beliefs about yourself. If you do not work on improving yourself and your self-concept, manifesting your desires will be difficult, and even if you manage to do so, you won't be able to keep them for long. I can give you countless examples, not just my own but those of others, where this truth has played out. I have had material possessions, money, and love that I could not sustain because my self-concept was not up to par with what I briefly manifested. Unfortunately, the manifesting community often overlooks this crucial element. While it's true that you can be and have anything you want, there's much more to manifesting than just that. To manifest and keep your big desire, you must work on your self-concept first. There's no way around it. That's why Neville not only taught about manifesting desires, but also emphasized the importance of self-observation, a mental diet, and inner conversations. You must change from within because when your inner state is aligned with what you want, your desires will automatically be attracted to you. Manifesting techniques are not enough. Among the hundreds of people that I have met so far in the manifesting community, two main patterns emerged. First case scenario, their thinking pattern is so opposite from the state of having their desire that they can't even manifest it at all. Second case scenario, they manage to manifest their desire because they are pretty good with the techniques, but because they haven't worked on their concept of themselves, they are unable to keep their desire. They get their desire, but pretty soon their old selves kick in and they find themselves back at square one. Manifesting techniques are great, and if you do them correctly, you will manifest your desire 100% of the time, but the techniques on their own will not change your thought pattern or deep core beliefs. While you can use your imagination to change your beliefs, imagining that you have your desire won't change the beliefs themselves. We observe a significant pattern when it comes to relationships and money, especially. Let's say you want to manifest a specific person, and more often than not, this person is an ex-partner who left you in the recent past. So in your desperation to get them back, you discovered the teaching of Neville Goddard, the law of assumption, and you realized this was the answer to your problem. You were told that you can get your ex back by simply affirming or visualizing that you have them back. You may have even gone deep into specific manifesting techniques such as say TS, which is a state akin to sleep visualization and involves creating a mental scene that implies that you are in the relationship that you desire to be in. And maybe you've manifested that specific person of yours back into your life, but a few weeks or months later, that person left you again, or maybe you are in the process of manifesting your specific person, but they are driving you crazy with their hot and cold behavior. You can't seem to understand why one day they are all loving and willing and why the next they are cold and ignoring your texts. Or yet again, while you desire to have enough money to be wealthy and financially free, you can't ever seem to be able to either keep the money that you've managed to manifest like it happened to me once upon a time, or you can't seem to be able to crack the code to make the type of money that will change your life. All of this is happening because you haven't changed your core beliefs about yourself, your concept of self, which will allow you to shift from the state that you are in right now to the state that can sustain your big desire. So what I'm trying to say is that you shouldn't depend only on the techniques, but change your core beliefs and work on your inner self to manifest fast and effectively. Revise the past experiences that have created your beliefs. Neville Goddard says, by revising the past, you rid yourself of any effect it may have on your future. 
Revising past experiences is necessary because it helps us to have a positive outlook and a new self-concept. When we hold on to negative memories, we allow them to shape our beliefs and attitudes toward ourselves and our future. Revision is a tool that helps us take control of our subconscious mind and rid ourselves of the effects of negative memories on our present and future. By revising past events, we can recreate them in our minds in a positive light, replacing negative beliefs with empowering ones. One of the key principles of revision is to understand that it does not change the external reality of what happened in the past. The past is already written, and we cannot change it. However, what we can change is our perception of it. We can choose to see past events in a positive light, focusing on the lessons we learned and the growth we gained from them. We can also choose to let go of negative emotions and limiting beliefs that were formed as a result of those events. To revise the past, Neville Goddard recommends a simple technique that involves visualizing the event as if it had occurred differently. For example, if you had a negative experience with someone, you can revise it by imagining a positive outcome instead. Visualize the person treating you kindly and with respect, and feel the emotions associated with that positive experience. By doing so, you are creating a new memory in your subconscious mind that will replace the negative one, and over time, this new memory will become the dominant one. The power of revision lies in its ability to reprogram our subconscious minds. Our subconscious mind is like a tape recorder that stores our memories, beliefs, and attitudes. When we revise the past, we are essentially recording a new tape that replaces the old one. As we continue to listen to this new tape, it becomes our reality, shaping our thoughts and actions toward a positive outcome. Creating a new self-concept is no easy feat. It takes time, effort, and dedication to achieve the desired outcome. However, there are several steps you can take to make this process easier and more effective. Here are some ways you can revise your life to create a new self-concept. Number 1. Reflect on your past experiences. One of the best ways to create a new self-concept is by reflecting on your past experiences. Take a moment to think about all the negative events that have happened in your life. These events could be anything from a failed relationship to a job loss. Once you have identified these events, it's time to revise them by creating new memories. For example, if you had a failed relationship, you could revise it by creating a new memory where you and your ex-partner worked out your differences and stayed together. This new memory will help you let go of the negative emotions associated with the past and create a new, positive self-concept. Number 2. Affirm yourself every day. Another way to create a new self-concept is by affirming yourself every day. This means telling yourself that you are who you want to be. For example, if you want to be a confident person, you can affirm yourself by saying, I am confident every day. Affirmations are powerful because they help you change the way you think about yourself. If you repeat a positive affirmation every day, your subconscious mind will start to believe it and you will start to act accordingly. Number 3. Use your imagination. Your imagination is a powerful tool that you can use to create a new self-concept. To do this, you need to embody the state of who you want to be. This means imagining yourself as the person you want to be and feeling the emotions associated with that state. For example, if you want to be a successful business owner, you can imagine yourself running a successful business and feeling the sense of accomplishment that comes with it. By using your imagination in this way, you can create a new self-concept that aligns with your desired state. Number 4. Watch your inner conversations. Your inner conversations are the thoughts you have about yourself and the world around you. If these conversations are negative, they can hinder your progress in creating a new self-concept. To ensure that your inner conversations are positive, you need to watch them closely and make sure that they do not conflict with your hard work. For example, if you are affirming yourself as a confident person, but your inner conversations are telling you that you are not good enough, you need to change those conversations. You can do this by replacing negative thoughts with positive ones and repeating positive affirmations. Number 5. Maintain a healthy mental diet. Developing a new self-concept can be a challenging and transformative experience, but it requires consistent effort and dedication to maintain. One of the most effective ways to achieve this is by maintaining a healthy mental diet. Just as we need to eat a balanced diet for physical health, it's equally important to feed our minds with positive and uplifting thoughts. Our thoughts have a powerful impact on our emotions, behaviors, and overall well-being. When we think positively, we feel better about ourselves, and we're more likely to take action toward our goals. One way to cultivate a healthy mental diet is by incorporating positive affirmations into our daily routine. Affirmations are positive statements that can help us reprogram our subconscious mind and replace negative self-talk with empowering beliefs. For example, 
I am capable and worthy of achieving my goals, or I am confident and courageous in all that I do. In addition to affirmations, there are many other resources available to help us maintain a healthy mental diet. Reading self-help books, attending personal development workshops, and listening to motivational podcasts are all great ways to expose ourselves to positive ideas and perspectives. Remember that maintaining a healthy mental diet is a lifelong practice. It requires daily effort and a commitment to personal growth. But with time and consistency, you can develop a powerful mindset that will help you achieve your dreams and live a fulfilling life. I hope I was able to deliver a good analysis of this theory by Neville Goddard. And of course, this doesn't mean we agree with every single thing he said or believed in, because in the end, everyone will form his or her own opinion, and that is why we are analyzing and discussing his ideas and methods to fully understand his approach and general ideas, as he was a great teacher and inspired millions of people around the world. If you want to share your opinion, comment down below this video. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to it and press the bell icon for more interesting, informative, and helpful videos on manifestation. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.